The methylation cycle occurs predominantly in our liver, and it's involved in the production of ATP, neurotransmitters, and antioxidants. If someone has an issue with this cycle, they might not be able to produce any of those. And if that's the case, they need to supplement with something or address the issue in the pathways that's basically preventing them from producing the energy, the mood, and the immune response they need in order to function better. If somebody has a methylated gene or MTHFR gene that is mutated or defective, they have a hard time with this methylation cycle to begin with, but it's not as simple as just testing one gene to see if this system's off. Like I said, if you don't have enough neurotransmitter production, you might have low serotonin or dopamine production. If you don't have a very strong immune system, you not, might not be able to produce enough glutathione, which is our body's strongest and most abundant antioxidant. If you have someone that has low energy, they're not producing enough ATP, and that might be an issue from a defective methylation gene and a methylation cycle that's not working properly. But it's not that simple. If you have to look at the bigger picture, you have to go within that cycle and the hundreds of different checkpoints, cofactors, and enzymes that are needed in order for this to function better and pinpoint exactly where the malfunction is going on. It's very complex, but think about this. Let's say you take nutrients in your body and you utilize them for what they're really designed for, which is to help us produce the ATP, to help us produce the neurotransmitters, to help us produce the glutathione and the antioxidants. You're essentially taking nutrients from food in order to break it down, take those nutrients into the body, and basically take it to where it's needed the most. The liver is going to be the center stage for a lot of our detoxification, but it's also a big center stage for the idea that all the nutrients in our bodies are either filtering through the liver or coming back up through the liver. So if it goes to somewhere in the body, it has to be passed through the liver, especially through digestion. Anytime you eat something, the liver is going to digest something and it's going to break it down. And then it stores it in the liver. The liver stores glucose. It stores cholesterol. It regulates hormones. It produces ATP. It produces antioxidants and it produces neurotransmitters, all because all that involves the methylation cycle. All of that is essentially how we have energy and an immune system in order to defend all of life's stressors and inflammation. Take the methionine and amino acid. It's an essential amino acid. If methionine goes into our body from the nutrients that we eat, and we have to get it from the nutrients that we eat, it will eventually convert into something called homocysteine. Homocysteine is an inflammatory marker we can check in serum and urine tests to see whether or not heart inflammation and brain inflammation is building. If homocysteine is elevated, the methionine that's converting to the homocysteine is not converting further into something called glutathione, which, like I said, is our most abundant and most strong antioxidant. If you have someone that's not having enough glutathione production, they have a poor functioning liver. They also have a poor functioning immune system as well. So maybe the issue is the methionine that's not converting to homocysteine is not converting to glutathione. Somewhere along that pathway, there's some kind of malfunction that's preventing the glutathione production. If you check the biomarker homocysteine, you might be able to identify that. If you check a methionine biomarker, you might be able to see that you're efficient methionine. But most people are pretty sufficient in methionine through the dietary consumption. So maybe it's an issue from the checkpoint of the homocysteine to the glutathione conversion. That's how complex a methi the methylation cycle can be. But you can take it even further because that methionine, that essential amino acid we talked about, Eventually, it starts up here, and then it converts to homocysteine, and then eventually it can convert to glutathione. But that methionine can also convert to something called SAMe, which is S-adenylmethionine. That conversion to homocysteine will spin a byproduct off known as ATP. So methionine goes to SAMe to convert to ATP. Methionine goes to SAMe to homocysteine to glutathione. Methionine will then go... SAMe, homocysteine, but instead of going to the glutathione, it will go up with the help of methyl B12, methyl B9, and then eventually produces something called serotonin dopamine. We get enough methionine. Like I said, it's not a problem with that. It's the idea that we need that methionine to come over to homocysteine, come to glutathione, go up to serotonin production, go up over here to dopamine production. The methionine is needed to be converted into many different forms to be carried to these pathways to produce these byproducts. The checkpoints 
that are needed along these cycles and these pathways are what's known as the methylation cycle. And that is why it's so complex. Because imagine if you're trying to basically create this gear to turn, right? And all these gears are connected to other gears. And if all those gears are connected, you need something to make sure those gears turn. They're called methyl donors. Methionine is a methyl donor. SAME is a methyl donor. Remember, methionine up here, then it comes to SAME, then it comes to homocysteine, then it goes to glutathione. That methionine and the SAME are all methyl donors. The homocysteine is a biomarker that you can check, but like I said, the SAME and the methionine are methyl donors that cause those gears to turn, which means methionine and SAME is needed in order to make the methylation cycle actually cycle. And then from that cycling, it kicks out ATP, kicks out glutathione, it kicks out serotonin and dopamine. If that cycle is not turning, maybe there's not enough methyl donors to crank the cycle going, or maybe there's a genetic issue when the cycle turns to here, stops. In MTHFR gene mutation, right, for example. But like I said, the, the MTHFR gene is just one part of that big cycle. There's amino acids that are needed. There's vitamin cofactors that are needed. There's enzymes that are needed to convert the homocysteine to the glutathione. And if your genetic mutation and your enzymes are off, you don't have that conversion from homocysteine to glutathione. If you're deficient in vitamins and that are cofactors to help you get the homocysteine to glutathione, then that won't ever happen. So there's a lot of different things to look at when it comes to the methylation cycle. And if you're confused at this point, it's okay. If you have someone that has a methylation issue, they're probably tired, they might get sick, they might have poor sleep, they might have poor mood. That's a lot of people. So does that mean there's a lot of people running around with methylated issues? Yeah, it's true. It's very much true because it's a design work of how we function and how we metabolize anything that goes into our bodies. If we have something that's very unhealthy in our body, our liver is the one that's usually going to get the worst part of the deal because the liver has to store everything you put in your body, right? So it stores sugar, it stores cholesterol. All of that, if it's coming from bad fat, like you know, corn oil, peanut oil, canola oil, or maybe like dairy, processed dairy, processed sugar, will replace the blue blood glucose in our body. Our liver is not going to be that healthy because it's going to be like a, the worst pantry cabinet you've ever seen, essentially the most typical American households. Look, go look into your pantry right now, and whatever's in there is pretty much an example of what your liver looks like. So if you have a pantry that needs to be cleaned out, that's essentially like you need a liver detox, right? Because probably the methylation cycle is not working. If you do a liver detox... You can filter out all the stuff that's built up that's basically overwhelming the methylation cycle in there, but then you still have to replenish whatever is missing that makes that cycle go. So that's why supplementation comes into play, right? You have to eliminate the foods that are causing the inflammation in your liver, which will essentially be you know, changing your diet, and it could be plant-based heavy, right, and maybe lean meat, very small, right, use meat as a condiment maybe. And if you go heavy on the plants, then, you know, your liver is going to be filtering out all the stuff that's been built up in it, getting rid of it. And then eventually it might become healthy again, right? The liver is one of the few organs that if you cut in half, and it actually it's the only organ that if you cut in half, it will regenerate completely if it's healthy. I mean, that the lungs can do it to a certain extent, but the liver can do that, right? That's incredible. So if you have someone that has a mutated gene, poor lifestyle, mutated methylation gene, poor lifestyle, Mm, they probably have a backed up liver that's not functioning very well and depleted full of nutrients. So supplementing has to be key, but you have to supplement with the right things in order for the methylation cycle to work. You have to supplement with methylcobalamin, right? Methyl B12, which is not cyanocobalamin, which is the vitamin B12 you find in most supplements. You're, it doesn't work in the methylation cycle. You're, you don't have a cyano cycle. You don't have a cyanolation cycle in your liver. It doesn't happen. You have a methylation cycle in your liver. So you need methyl B12, which means you also need methyl tetrahydric folic acid or methyl B9, right? You don't need folic acid. You need methyl B9. There's a big difference, right? Because like I said, the cycle works with methyl B9, not folic acid. Folic acid comes into the cycle and then it has to get converted. Remember the pathways. It 
B9 gets converted into methotetrahydrofolic acid. That's what you really want. So here's your vitamin lesson. If you're going to supplement for the methylation cycle to help it, you have to take methyl B12 or methyl B9, the right kind of bioavailable form of B12 or B9 that works with the cycle. Your body cycle and the methylation cycle were designed for methyl B9 and methyl B12. It wasn't designed for cyanocobalamin and folic acid. Folic acid needs to be converted and eventually methyl B9. SAMe. You need SAMe, right? SAM is S methionine, which will help you with the ATP production, the serotonin production, like we talked about. If you have high elevated homocysteine in your blood work or your urine sample, you can lower it by giving yourself methyl B9, methyl B12. It's not working. Maybe SAMe is the problem, right? Supplement with that. Maybe if that's not the issue, another cofactor could be vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is P5P. To most people, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, and uh, that is a big deficiency in a lot of people. You can have deficiency in iron, B12. You can have deficiency in B9. You can have a deficiency in B6. They're all kind of related. So if you have someone that's low in B6, that cofactor of the P5P, the pyridoxal 5-phosphate, if that's not there, that conversion from homocysteine down to glutathione doesn't happen. That conversion of SAMe to homocysteine doesn't happen. So it means no ATP, ATP production, no glutathione production. P5P is needed to help with serotonin and dopamine synthesis. So if there's B6 deficiency, there's low serotonin and low dopamine production. All right? You never thought about it. You thought serotonin comes from the brain? Predominantly comes from the duodenum, which is in located in the small intestinal tract right next to the liver. So you got to think about the liver's functioning and the methylation cycle is cranking out. Whatever comes out of that cycle goes into the duodenum to help with serotonin production. Well, the B6 is in there. So if the B6 isn't there in your body, the liver is not going to be able to help the duodenum produce the serotonin that you need in order to feel better. Low serotonin is usually thought of in depression, but serotonin also has a lot of different other actions other than just mood. All right. Behavior, the game regulates blood pressure too, or helps with it. So it's a very important part of how we function. And if your methylation cycle is off, your nutrients are deficient, and your genes are mutated, your liver is not working well, and you are not functioning well. You're no ATP production, no antioxidant production, or no neurotransmitter production. So that's why it's important to supplement with the right things to meet your genetic needs, to meet your nutrient needs. You can't just take a regular multivitamin that had contained cyanocobalamin because you know that's not going to help you feel better. It's not going to help you function better. But that's what the methylation cycle is, how we function.